we are still with our amazing lions and with the cubs that are now known as the little sausages. Hey, little sausages, now of course, because we want to talk about you, you've disappeared behind the long grass. Moving around here is not all that easy, but we've still got one to keep us entertained. Already with the black tips behind its ear. You know, of course, Dave, it was inevitable that when we came here, they'd all move that side. Naturally. Oh, someone's chewing on the carcass because there's a cloud of flies taking off above them. Oh, they're all here. No oh, goodness. Ow, don't bite me. <laughs> Sorry. One of them just bit me on the thigh and it wasn't particularly pleasant. Oh, I can hear a Cokie Franklin. That's a familiar sound from home. Now, speaking of the flies that have just nipped me on the leg, John, you would like to know if there's any natural way that the animals keep the flies off them. Not all of these are tsetse flies, by the way. In fact, I don't actually see a tsetse fly within that particular group. But the lions, as I said, will go up trees. A lot of the animals will wallow in mud um, and try and go onto crests where if there's a bit of a breeze, something that will keep the flies away. Oh, look at cheeky little one tucking in there. But for the most part, John, they're just used to it. Learning to share with mum. With something that lions are not particularly good at. There's a lot of growling involved at the dinner table. The Cokie Franklin here sounds like it's overdosed on its cups of coffee today. Just a different accent. Could you hear it there, Dave? Yeah. Cokie, Cokie, Cokie. It's, sounds different to Juma. Oh, third mouth not quite strong enough to break off a chunk of flesh, our little one. Take some serious chewing happening there. Yes, use those back teeth, that's what you should do. And tug. Come on, give it a tug. Sure. Janet, yes, there I think there are more flies in the Mara just because there's more animals just in terms of density and I think that that would suggest that there are more flies here. And of course there are tsetses which we don't really get in South Africa, it's certainly not on Juma. Um, but I don't, I guess there must be more flies, just oh look at the little one, that's it, get right in there, jump on that carcass. So I guess yes in a way you could say there are more flies just because there's more for them to feed on particularly during the migration where it's just carnage, essentially. Colleen, while we watch the lioness stick her entire head into the carcass. Oh, yum. Bet you smell lovely, my dear. Colleen, you want to know what the effects of the tsetse fly can be? Apart from the, the somewhat painful bite, I mean, it does only last a couple of milliseconds, but you're aware of it. It creates in certain people, naturally myself included, given the way I react to ticks in general, um, if tsetse flies create an itchy, painful lump on your skin, and basically just your, your body reacting to the substance of their saliva. And then from there, you can also, they do transmit sleeping sickness. Now it is possible to get sleeping sickness from them. I would suggest that the animals out here have a pretty much natural immunity to that, whereas human beings, not so much. Oh, here comes the first vehicle on their way to see the lions. Sorry, Dave. Sorry. <laughs> Dave thought I was about to show him something very exciting. I was merely suggesting the possibility of movement. He appears to have found a road that we did not know about, Dave, which is happening to me a lot around here. I've also gone on roads I think I know where they're going to lead to, and they lead in the opposite direction, like yesterday. Oh, Cubs! Cubs playing at the back. I wonder, I wonder if we shouldn't go around and back onto the road. Let me just wait to see where this vehicle picks his spot, and then I'll move around, rather than having two engines on at the same time. Mr. Filipovic, you would like to know where the male is. I have absolutely no idea. Here somewhere, I would presume, 
Apparently he was around here. Um, I don't know where he is. I assume he's found himself a nice shady spot somewhere. Let's wait and see where this vehicle goes. I assume he's around. Um, you saw him this morning, didn't you, Dave? Yeah, yeah. You did. Fang. The one with the missing canine. So, Mr. Filipovic, I assume he's here somewhere. He might even make an appearance. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the gate closes at a set time, we won't be able to stay with them till it gets dark. But we've got another 20 minutes or so, I would say, before it will be time for us to wind our way back home. Right. I'm going to reposition. That is what I want to do. So while I do that, since it's not very exciting um, and it's a bit bumpy, let's go across to Ali. And I didn't hear what she's doing, but I'm sure, as always, it will be very exciting. <laughs> 